What is up everybody and welcome back to the BB of Bus where today we're picking up where we left off in the last video and continuing on some bus improvement projects. Let's go. Oh, so in order to explain the reasoning behind what we're doing today, we're going to take a step outside and give a little demonstration as to what and why I've chosen to make this improvement right now. This is where I fill my tanks. Um, when I'm parked in a really regular spot, I have a hose attached to the city inlet, and that's really great because then I don't have to run my pump, then I don't have to check my tank levels, and my bus has water. But when I go to fill my tank, I stand here with a hose pouring into my gravity feed inlet for who knows how long. And here's the challenge that, you know, yes, this is because of my design and my lack of knowledge when I built this bus, but there is no way to check how full my tank is unless you open up the fridge drawer so that's not under the bed anymore and then dive bomb your way under the bed through the garage all the way up almost into this closet and look around the corner to see the tank. It's really difficult, especially when I have all my things in there. I have to take everything out just to crawl in and look, look at my tank levels. So whenever I'm filling up this tank, it's either one, a total guessing game as to when it's full, when it's half, when it's close, or two, I gotta dive in there, check. If it's not close, come back out, stand here again, turn it off, go inside, check. Come. It's a very cumbersome process. So what we're gonna do today in this video is add a tank monitoring system so that I can check the levels of my gray tank without diving under there, but also be able to see the levels while I'm filling it up, standing out here outside of the bus. So let's take a look at what that is. This is what we're going to add to the bus today. There are several different general monitoring systems that you can add to your bus or your RVs or whatever. Like I've said in previous videos, I do not want this kind of unit to be visible all the time. I don't want to feel like I'm living in some odd sort of space. I want it to feel like a house and you don't have this kind of stuff in a house. So I'm going to hide it in a cabinet or a closet somewhere because I don't need to be looking at it all the time. You know, maybe once every three days or so, I'll go check it, see what's up. So I know what I'm going to, what things look like in the next couple of days. That being said, this is the C level two RV tank monitor. Um, it can monitor your battery, fresh water, gray water, black water, and your propane. Right now, I'm only going to set it up to water my fresh, uh, to monitor my fresh, um, and I may expand some of that in the future. But that means that I have this adhesive uh, sensor that goes on the outside of your tank. This is one of the big reasons why I chose this setup is because I don't have to tap into my tank or put floaters or bobbies or whatever into my tank that is already in a very difficult to reach place. This just sticks to the outside surface of your tank and it uses these sensors all the way up and down to send signals out these wires to the display unit, which then displays a percentage of fullness. The reason why I went with this exact specific model is right here. I can monitor the level on my phone via Bluetooth. That way I can be standing outside, filling my tank and see how full it is as I'm filling it up. That is a big, goal for this system so that I'm not having to do some clunky, weird maneuver outside trying to check and reference how full it is. I can watch it on my phone as I fill it up and then bam. That's the goal with this system. So let's go ahead and see what it's going to take to install it. Oh. Clearly it's not the same day. That's because not five minutes after I emptied out my garage last night, a friend came by and by the time we wrapped things up, uh, it was a little late to keep going. So I packed everything back in and now we're back at it. So it's the next morning, we're gonna unload everything and then pick up where we left off last night. So after emptying everything out and taking a look around here, I've realized that there's probably a better spot where I could install the interface for this tank monitoring system. Uh, if you look here, you'll see this hang down coming down from underneath my bed. That is actually a box that I built in and I haven't actually shared or addressed on this channel at all because I don't feel like I need to. 
until now because this is part of my install and part of my uh, upgrade project here in the bus. So this is actually a box where I keep a lot of my uh, photo equipment and gear and it's accessible from underneath the bed. I can lift up the bed on the inside and then I have this felt lined box that I keep all my camera stuff. This interface would fit perfectly mounted on the back wall of that box and I can go inside and show you what that would look like if I were to do so. One, that's gonna be a much easier install for me because I can reach this space really easily. Two, once it's installed, this pigtail is gonna be coming out of the back of it, which I can, you know, tidy up here along the back side of the box, but this pigtail has cords for propane, black water, gray water, all these other tank monitoring systems that I could use if I wanted to add that on later. I just have to get the sensors for it. So that way later, if I want to add another sensor, it'll be much easier to do so here rather than way up in there. So don't mind this drawer, it's at absolute shambles right now, but this is what I'm talking about. There's this box down here where I keep some gear and this unit could sit right in there on that back wall. And then I just reach in here, push the, push the info that I wanna see. And just like that, I'd have access to my tank levels. Um, I'm thinking the back wall, it's, it's not any harder to reach there than it is here on the side or the other side, but it's easier to make the cut and install it there. So that's what I'm going to go for back there on the back wall. All right, so there is the back of the display unit and you see the pigtail coming out of it as well. There's only a certain number of these wires that we're actually gonna hook up and use. Red is gonna be 12 volt positive. Black is gonna be a ground that is gonna be shared with the black on my sensor. The blues are gonna get hooked together and that should be it to get this thing up and running. Um, this sensor needs to go on the tank. I just test fitted it and this sensor is too tall, but they build these sensors in a way that you can cut it shorter to fit the size of tank you need. You just have to cut in between these pads. So in these gaps here. So we're gonna cut one off, test fit it again, see if that's gonna work. Hopefully it will, otherwise I'll have to take two off and then it'll be a little bit short. Um, but let's go give this a trim. Mm -hmm. All right, and there's one tab trimmed off. Let's go test fit it again and see how it works. So I went back in and test fitted it. I It's it's too tight in there to really take this camera to show you as I'm doing this right now. I'll show you once this is in there so you can see what it looks like. But the instructions recommend that the t very top of this sensor and the very bottom of the sensor are at least a quarter inch shorter than the total height of the tank, if that makes sense. So they want a quarter inch margin at the top and a quarter inch margin at the bottom minimum. Right now, this sensor is still about half inch taller than the tank itself. So that means I'm gonna have to cut two more inches off, which means that the sensor is gonna be slightly short for the tank, but that's okay. That just means that I'm gonna center it and when it reads out 100%, I'll know I have a little bit more room. And when, read it, when it reads out 0%, I know I have a few more gallons. That's, that's the application and how it's gonna change the way I interface with it. So let's uh, give it another trim. All right, so let's talk through this wiring just so that we're clear on what's going on here. So this is our 
ground terminal uh, it has three wires going into it because one from the display one from the sensor on the tank and one to my main 12 volt ground um, panel this one is a, only a one-to-one -one connection because this just delivers power to the unit and this goes back to a positive uh, on my fuse bank and then this one I've also made into this uh, group terminal because this will let me pretty easily add on more sensors in the future just by throwing in uh, more lines into this piece and connecting the sensors up. So uh, this green one goes to the sensor and this blue one goes to the unit. So right now, once I put the fuse back in, make this live, this should all work. Uh, I'm gonna fill my tank a little bit first because the instructions say that before you test it, you wanna have about a quarter full water tank and then you can reference, okay, my tank is quarter full. It should read about 25%. So gonna put some water in my tank and then we're gonna put the fuse back in, turn this on and see how we did. All right, so here's a view of what the sensor looks like in here on my tank. You can see it's about half inch from the top, about the same from the bottom, and that darker line towards the bottom is how full my tank is right now. So let's go throw the fuse back in and see how it reads. Okay, there's our battery level. Now if we push fresh. Hmm, 8%, that feels like it's a little low. However, in the instructions, it says that it will learn as it goes. And we gotta remember that I did put the sensor up a little bit. So even though the tank is a quarter full, it's gonna read less than what it really is. So let's go set up a Bluetooth app and see how that works. All right, now here's what I really want to be able to test. When I first turned it on, it read 8%, which was lower than what was reality, right? But that's because the sender is a little bit off from the bottom of the tank, so there's water below it that it doesn't account for. I just filled it up, up to 50%, and I was watching the app as I filled it up, and you, you saw a little, little time-lapse video of the screen recording of the app, so you can see it climbing, 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 climbing. Now that we, the app says 50%, I'm very curious to see how full it is in there right now. So we're gonna crawl in, take a look, see if it's fit halfway up the sensor, halfway up the tank, or if it's completely cattywampus and something else. So let's crawl in and take a look. And we peek around the corner and it looks a little bit low for 50%, but it's not far off. Um, as I said before, the instructions do say that the sensor should kind of educate itself through time and use and exposure to being being actually utilized. So that's what I'm anticipating, but that's pretty close to halfway. Um, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. So let's uh, go take a look at the monitor inside and see what that looks like right now. And all the way in here, battery still reads 13. Fresh, 50%. Brilliant. So I could check this in the app. I can also open up the bed, pop that button. It'll tell me right there. These say open because there's no sensor attached. Maybe I'll get a, a propane one. I don't even have a black tank and I don't know if I feel the need to put a sensor on my gray tank. But right now, that is way better than crawling in under my bed to take a peek around the corner. Oh my goodness. That is actually, honestly, such a relief to have built that system into the bus, finally. I, it, uh, for my months in Yakima, I was attached to a hose, so I really didn't have to worry about it. And when I would go for a weekend, what, you're gone two days? So I stand with the hose for 10 minutes. I'm like, okay, that's probably enough water. No idea how much was in there. So it's just, you know, should be enough. But since I've been here in Southern California, I've been moving the bus a lot more. I haven't been attached to a city line the entire time i've been going on longer trips and i've had to go and check my tank and it is a colossal pain so it hasn't been until recently that i've really felt the need to implement a system like this and now i am 
ecstatic that it's in there and that it uh, seems to work. Hopefully you found this a little bit interesting or educational. Maybe this taught you a system that you can implement in your build. Uh, if so, give this video a like down below and don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the next couple bus improvement projects coming up. And with that, we're at the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching and I appreciate your support and ongoing following of this channel. And we'll see you in the next one here in the BB bus. Bye.